Everybody, welcome back to Plugin Tut, your home for handcrafted WordPress plugin tutorials. And right out of the gate, I do apologize for the AC running in the background. For those of you that have been following me for a while, my office is in my attic and it gets really hot in the afternoon. Uh, and you can also tell that I've rearranged some things so that I could put the AC in. Today's video is what I would probably call like a master class. Uh, this is a little bit more advanced. It also requires a couple of purchased products. Uh, Beaver Builder Agency, Beaver Themer, uh, Elementor Pro, and Advanced Custom Fields Pro. And the goal of today is to show you how to leverage Advanced Custom Fields uh, with Elementor and Beaver Builder so that you can have your customers log into their WordPress website and modify content in the WordPress dashboard without ever having to touch Elementor or Beaver Builder. Now, I'm not using these two in conjunction with each other. I'm just showing you the difference of Elementor and Beaver Builder and how to do it in the respective page builder here. And this came up when I was helping out a local nonprofit uh, through this whole COVID stuff, and I helped them quickly build a website. And then they came to me the other day and they said, hey, we've got these three documents that we always have our donors and these other nonprofits that work with us. They have to fill this out. And these documents are changed every quarter. And the person who's responsible for that has to then go into the website and upload uh, these documents into the WordPress website. So I had quickly built them something in Beaver Builder with Beaver Themer. You know, got the job done using the Nev theme. The problem is, is the person who's logging into the site, number one, I, I don't want them going into a page and even modifying content like on the site, on the blog post or anything like that. And they're not super technically savvy. So the challenges of like, okay, I've logged into WordPress. How do I do that? There's a special feature in Advanced Custom Fields Pro that allows you to add a snippet of code to your WordPress functions file and load up an options page on the left-hand side of your admin so that that person could, could just log in and modify those custom fields directly in the dashboard without even modifying the content. Let's go ahead and dive right in. I'll show you that. Uh, it, this requires Advanced Custom Fields Pro in order to enable these functions or for these functions to be enabled. Um, if you're a WordPress developer, there are ways to do this without having to use Advanced Custom Fields, of course, but uh, Advanced Custom Fields does make this simple. So I'm going to copy this. As always, back up your... WordPress site before you're doing any of this stuff. Certainly be don't don't be doing this on the fly like I am. I'm just doing it for sake of example. We're going to go into our functions.php file. Again, make your backups, use a child theme, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm going to paste that little snippet of code at the bottom. And basically what this is saying is create an options page when somebody logs in to the site. So I'm going to update that file refresh my page and you'll see all the way down here on the left hand side we now have this options page when i click it there's absolutely nothing here because now we're going to create the custom fields let's go to custom fields field groups add a new group and in this particular case these were documents so i'm going to say special documents and the first field I'm going to add is actually a description. And we're going to make this a WYSIWYG uh, right here, WYSIWYG editor. And this is going to give the user, well, a WYSIWYG editor so they, that this person can come in and post an update. So every quarter uh, they modify these documents and they want to be able to post something above or below the document, doesn't matter, to say, hey, we've updated the documents for the summertime or the fall or, you know, this is for the gala that's approaching. Make sure you download these documents, right? Give them the option to uh, have a little description there. And I'm going to add another field and these are the files. So I'm just going to simply call them file. I'm going to say field name file one. You'll see why in a moment. Add that field. I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to delete this field. Remove. Close field. And then I will just duplicate. It automatically makes it to file two. And I'll duplicate again. It'll make it to file three. Okay, so let's close this. 
And let's... Why do I have two? Did I double-click that by accident? I did, so let me remove that. So three files and hit Publish. Now, in the location of Advanced Custom Fields, if this is the first time you're seeing this, you don't have to do it necessarily this way, but you can attach Advanced Custom Fields to any post, page, custom post type, many different post items in WordPress. Uh, but with that Advanced Custom Fields Pro, we can say, attach this to an options page. And we'll hit Update. So what it'll look for is that code that we added before. It'll look for that options page that we enabled and say, you know, dump all of those fields on this page. And when we click options, there it is. We have our uh, description field and we have our file fields. And I see I accidentally did something. So let's go back into custom fields, field groups, edit. I forgot to make these a file field. <laughs> so these are not text fields. We want them to be file fields. Go down to the next one, edit, file field, and the last one, edit, and turn that into a file field. Update that. Let's take a look back at our options page. Yes, and you can see here are our file fields. The files are there. This was from some testing before, so I'll remove that. You can just see this is how somebody would visually see it's like a customized blog post editor, right? So instead of going into your typical WordPress page or post, you know, where they might have to see all of the blog posts, all of the pages, you create this customized options page, and this person only has to log into this section right here. And let's even take a look at that. So I'm going to hit update there. I have a plugin enabled called user switching, user switching, and I'm going to switch to the Jane user. And Jane only has access to blog posts and nothing else uh, throughout the site. But when she goes to her options page, she'll be able to log in to this section and make those specific modifications to the documents and to the description. She doesn't have access to pages, contact forms, plugins, the theme, and all of that stuff. I've uh, put her permissions to just the author role, and this is what she has access to. So very streamlined when you want to have that kind of functionality. Let's switch back to Matt. And now we'll build the example out. So let's select these files. These are the files that I'm just placeholding these files here for sake of demonstration. So it says the documents for summertime are ready to go. Here are the three files. I'm going to hit update. The first one we'll take a look at is Beaver Builder. So remember, you will need to have a Beaver Themer purchased and activated for this to work. So add new template. We'll call this documents. Actually, I already had that typed in, of course. Add templates or add save template. And launch Beaver Builder. And now we'll build our template for pulling in those ACF fields. So the first thing that we'll do is pull in a text editor. Drop that in. You'll know you have Beaver Themer activated because this little plus symbol is what is going to let you know that you can pull in these ACF custom fields here. So we'll insert this options field. Field type will be a file. And the field name, or excuse me, the first one will be uh, WYSIWYG. And that will be description. Save. Save. And you'll see it will automatically go and query that, that custom field. And I had typed in that options panel. The documents for summer are ready to go. Now we're going to add. This is exactly how I did it with that friend of mine. Put three columns in. Because we have, she had three major, three major documents that are always being downloaded. I'll use the button module. Again, exactly how I did it. Look for something that represents a document. Uh, let's just say this one for right now. We'll say text is download document. And the link will be that advanced custom field, options field, file, and it was called file underscore one, save and save. Now I simply duplicate these in Beaver Builder, drag that there, drag this here, and now we have to edit those custom fields to represent each unique file file. So this one was called file two, save. 
This one was called file three. Save. We'll hit done and publish. So now we'll head over to our My Documents page and drop that template in. We're gonna hover over My Documents, click on Beaver Builder, that will drop us right into the Beaver Builder uh, page editor. Click on Templates, Landing Page, Save Templates, since this is one that we've already created, of course. Click on it, it's gonna drop it right in to our page. Hit Done, hit Publish, and there it is. Now we have our three documents. Uh, which is, are just images. So in the real world example, I use PDFs for uh, my friend. Uh, but now because it's a template, it can be placed within different sections uh, of a website. So you can imagine this working not just for documents, but for little bits of content about pages. What's a really common one, which I'm sure if you've de developed a site for like any small business or nonprofit organization or Chamber of Commerce, they have these sponsorship logos for people who have donated to them. This is another great use case for that. So instead of documents, it's logos for somebody's sponsorship page. And then because it's a template, it can be used throughout the site uh, in many different contexts. So that's how you do it in Beaver Builder. Let's hop on over to doing it in Elementor. Go to the dashboard. Elementor templates, save templates. I don't have any, so we're going to hit add new. We will call this a section. We'll call this documents. Create the template. And we're just gonna do a blank uh, template short of the three. Let's start with the buttons first uh, on this one. So. Go here, go buttons. And I'm showing you both because one, uh, people are curious on how to do it for both page builders. They're both very popular. Of course, Elementor, very popular. Uh, but I'm curious to get your look and feel when you see both of these builders side by side, the experience of both. I, I, I still very much lean to Beaver Builder, maybe because it's the one that I'm uh, most comfortable with. But instead of the, do the plus symbols that Beaver Builder has on their field settings, uh, you have this sort of like database icon or what they're calling the dynamic tags uh, in Elementor. When you click that, you get a very similar drop down and we'll go to ACF URL field and it drops it in and then you click on it one more time and you pull in the options file here and you do file one and let's remember to uh, change this so we can say download document. And we'll do the same thing. We'll add an icon um, quickly without wasting too much time here. Well, let's just search. They say don't waste too much time. There's nothing there. So let's do paper. I don't know. This one looks good enough for now. We'll insert that. And just because I can't stand uh, the yellow, we'll change the color. I don't know, to that, okay? And then we'll do the same thing uh, we did with Beaver Builder. We'll duplicate, we'll duplicate, and then we'll bring it over to our respective sections. Edit this field, and we are going to select the second one. And then the same thing over here, we are going to select the third one, okay? Now let's go ahead and drop in that message part where the, the user is able to put in a little message. We'll grab the text editor. And for now, actually let's just put it right here for now. And the dynamic tag will be ACF field. Click on it again. The key will be the options description. And then we'll drag it above. Boom. That's it, we'll hit publish. So our template is saved, we'll exit to the dashboard. We'll go to our documents page. First let's edit it and switch it to uh, the standard editor and we'll get rid of any of this Beaver Builder stuff that's there, remove block, remove block. Uh, certainly you would never have both page builders enabled on any production site, or at least I hope not. 
We will go into our templates folder, grab the documents, insert it, yes. And there it is, it'll drop in our ACF powered section there. And again, you'll be able to use this on any, uh, you know, any place that you can edit within, uh, whoops, I wanted to view the page, uh, any place that you can edit with Elementor. So again, just a super fast recap, we're using Advanced Custom Fields Pro to have our own custom fields, and then to go beyond that, our own custom options page, so that a user doesn't even have to touch Elementor or Beaver Builder or blog post pages or pages, so that they don't, you know, futz with the design or anything else critical. We can give them an author-only access, let's say, and then all they have to do is log into WordPress, go to their options page here, and their job is done, right? So when they only do this four times a year, you don't get that support question like, what page is it on again? How do they click on this? How do, where do they find the files? They come right here and they remove and replace these three files and they make their description change right up at the top. Very, very easy uh, and very, very capable for somebody who doesn't spend all of their time in WordPress. I hope you enjoyed today's video a little bit longer than most. Subscribe, thumbs up if you want more of this stuff. Again, I apologize for the AC in the background if it is super loud, but we're rearranging, we're rearranging the YouTube studio yet again. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next video.